Hey all you Mintees, this is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today I take a suggestion from a lot of you viewers that have wanted me to do this spotlight for a long time. So that means today I am focusing on graphic novels published by humanoids. So please stay tuned. And welcome back all you Mintees. Now, let's talk humanoids. This is a company that has been around since 1974, publishing comics in uh, France. And it was founded by several artists from France, one of them being Mobius, probably the most popular one. One of the things I wanted to do really quick is do a size comparison. These are some of their, actually let's do this one. This is one of their smaller hardcovers compared to the size of a trade paperback. Because you could probably tell from back here that they're all various sizes and compared to the size of an omnibus. So this, like I said, is one of their smaller hardcovers. And that's the way it looks, almost as tall as an omnibus, a little bit longer. So one thing to note is the different sizes. I've done overviews of both the Meta Barons and the Incal Deluxe Limited Editions. They also have slip cases, such as this case of the Meta Barons Genesis Castaca back here. And I'll be taking a closer look at some of those slip cases. They have oversized hardcovers. And then they have these huge editions like this. This is the box set of Incal. And there was also like these coffee table books that were pretty tall. They are also released in these standard size hardcovers, which like I said, are a little taller than your standard size trade paperback from Marvel and DC. These hardcovers hardly ever come with it. I can think of maybe one or two that have a dust jacket, but for the most part, don't have a dust jacket. They just have art on the actual board. Obviously, I can't go through every single one of these, so I'll pick a couple out to represent them. You've seen the overviews of both Meta Barons and Incal, so I don't have to go through those. Just click on the link above for that those videos. Let's look at one of these slip cases. This is Meta Barons Genesis Castaca. So inside of this box set is this hardcover. Now this is also available in a smaller hardcover like you saw in Cal. This is a hardcover with no dust jacket again. Let's open it up. This is Jodorowsky. We will talk a little bit about Jodorowsky. This is part of the Meta Barons universe, part of the Jodoverse, if you will. Okay, I'll go ahead and talk about Jodorowsky. Here's some of that beautiful oversized artwork. You all know how much I love oversized artwork and that's why I get these versions. So the Jodorowsky universe is pretty much anything that he wrote. He's a writer from Chile and he has worked of course on Incal. He did before Incal. He did the spin-off Meta Barons which then have their own spin-offs like the Techno Priest and then Genesis Castaca which is another family of the Meta Barons. All of this again translated from Humanoids. And I'll talk a little bit of the history of Humanoids here in a second. Let's look at another book. So here we have Cape Horn. It is the size of the Meta Baron's Castaca without the slipcase, right? So it's an oversized hardcover. And the beauty of these books is while you saw my Incal and my Meta Baron's unboxing for both of those, you can tell there's sci-fi elements in there, right? But it's not just sci-fi. They translate everything from Westerns to love stories to fantasy. And we'll go look through some of those here in a second. For example, you have a book right here. This is another slipcase, The Legend of the Scarlet Blades. Um, that looks like it takes place in feudal Japan, but it's actually a mix of fantasy and feudal Japan. And what's really cool about these, and sometimes you have to do just a little bit of research, unless you got somebody that makes videos on these all the time, is that some of these stories are in their own little universe. So Legend of the Scarlet Blades spun out a series called Izuna. There's a couple of books of these that take place in the Legend of the Scarlet Blades universe. And you can probably tell, yeah, these books are oversized too. They're not the size of those standard size hardcovers. While I enjoy the stories, what really, really drives me to get these books are these wonderful artists that are just so talented. And we are so blessed to have this stuff finally available in English. That's why I enjoy this company so much. So I'll do a little bit of a history lesson on humanoids, or as much as the Uncanny Omar can remember, by the way. Okay, we're gonna be looking at Bouncer. This is another one that's uh, Jodorowsky, and it's uh, Francis Bok, I believe. Sorry, 
I'm horrible with pronouncing names to begin with. So this is a Western, right? When I said that they have different types of books, this one here is a Western and it is so awesome. Kind of makes me wish that they would translate Blueberry. So as I promised, a little bit of the history of humanoids. So humanoids started all the way back in 1974 in France. Uh, it was founded, like I said, by a few artists. I think there were three of them, but one of them, the most famous one, or at least to me, is Mobius. Mobius, of course, doing Incal and Blueberry and other works that have not been translated. But they founded this magazine, and it was like a monthly magazine, and eventually it made its way into Japan, Japan. and America. And in America, uh, they started publishing books through DC at first. They had a partnership with DC publishing some of these books, and then DC ended that partnership. The folks at Humanoids back in France, the headquarters in France, still wanted to keep publishing books. So eventually they moved their headquarters to LA while still having a smaller headquarters in France and decided to keep pursuing other companies like Image uh, and then Devil's Do. Finally, I think in 2003, they just cut ties with everybody and decided to start self-publishing their books here in America uh, and in Japan. But we're talking about the books that are translated into English. So they started doing all the classic stuff. They brought back Inkow, they brought back Meta Barons, uh, and then eventually started doing their own type of books. But we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but yes, these are some of the translations they have done. Um, Bouncer is one of my favorite westerns I've read. And it's funny, right? Because it's written by a guy from Chile. It's drawn by a guy from France. But it's about an American western. Oh, it's awesome. This dude's a badass with just one arm. So, these are the type of books. And then there's also Adventure, where you have an oceanographer going down here uh, to the bottom of the oceans to try to find this legendary megalodon shark that should have been extinct but could still be alive you have things like this like that would make for an awesome movie of course you know i don't have to tell you all the story of jodorowsky and the original dune but yeah i'm sure you all know that but you have things like this this actually had a follow-up called carthago adventures then you have uh books like this that you may find familiar names like kurt Busick. So yes, Kurt Busiek wrote this. This is the slipcase of Red Hand, Twilight of the Gods, which is kind of like Conan meets John Carter, Warlord of Mars. That's kind of what this reminds me of. But the settings are in this medieval fantasy world. Love this book. And there's also artists that work over there, such as the case of Terry Dotson working on Muse uh, with this French writer right here, uh, D.P. I'm so sorry, Felipe. The Dennis Pierre Felipe, that's who it is. And yeah, and you're familiar with Terry Dotson. He's done a lot of work here in America for Marvel and DC. And this book is gorgeous. And I got to be careful when I turn some pages here because there is some stuff here that is mature content. But just look at this gorgeous artwork that, you know, some people wouldn't even know about because there's a lot of people still worried about getting books from publishers like humanoids because there's a difference between like independent comics and european comics uh and before i talk a little bit about that i mentioned how some of this is mature content yeah so you got to be careful because there are some things that are mature audiences or what some people may consider mature scenes depends on i guess who you are uh, but there is a big line that's big that features a line of comics for young readers and then there's books like this like this is life drawn and most of those focus on diverse social themes uh, there's also the jodaverse which i talked about which is an interconnected shared universe even though the stories vary from cats to a, uh, a chick that's addicted to sex to meta barons and incal all of that is by Jodorowsky, Alejandro Jodorowsky, and then the H1 universe, which started, I think, just a couple of years ago, and that is a shared universe um, where ordinary people turn into superheroes. That's an original line by Humanoids, and that's the H1 universe. All these books, by the way, when they come from Humanoid, come sealed like this, but so we got to take it out. So when they're new, they all come in their own little seal. Yeah. So we have books like this. The, the constructing the meta barons which um, help you understand and break down the history of the meta barons through all the different faces and all the different books that he Jodorowsky has written these are beautiful source material books I there's the original breakdown of the collaboration between Jodorowsky 
and his art Artist, he menace. Uh, Travis Cheris has actually drawn some of the stuff for weapons of the Matter Barons. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him. He was one of my favorite artists that kind of started off like a Jim Lee clone. Actually, let me get that book. This book right here, also written by Joe Dawaski. So yeah, Travis Cheris started off like a Jim Lee clone, and now he's kind of doing his own thing. Look how gorgeous his art is. And that's my main push for these books. If you're a fan of artwork, this is the place to go. This is the stuff that will remind you of magazines like Heavy Metal Magazine and things like that. At least that's what it did with me. Uh, one of the things I will say, let me look at another book, is that sometimes the translations can be a little difficult to get used to. Um, so each one of these credits the translator. And for the most part, they do a phenomenal job. By the way, this is uh, Jodorowsky's and uh, Balk, the guy that did the bouncer books this is their twisted tales they're just short little short stories with one panel artwork but maybe not the perfect example we'll look at this one really quick what i was trying to get at is that it takes a little bit at least for me it did to get used to that style of european storytelling and that might have something to do with the translation sometimes the translation can't translate a certain phrase or a certain saying or slang so, I mean, not only are you talking about mythical worlds, but you're also talking about translating from French or Spanish into the English language. So it kind of reminds me of the way that some people react to manga, like uh, their brains have to get used to not just going from right to left, but also the weird translations. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But once you get used to it, Man, they, these are some of the best books out there. Not only best books, but some of the best world building. I mean, look what Jodo Waski has done with his own Jodoverse. He has supplied us with endless amounts of just spin-offs of, of one little book called the Incal. And it's just brilliant, some of the stuff. And of course, yes, the art is what really pushes me. I wish I had gotten the slipcase version of this. See, I missed out. One thing I will say, these books have a tendency to go out of print. Right, I'm showing some that are still in print, uh, but once they go out of print, they get expensive in the secondhand marketplace. They get pricey because these people know that there are fans out there that will pay the price for some of these books. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Like for example, I missed out on the Techno Priest slipcover, and I would love to have it. So maybe you know they'll reprint it. So they, from time to time, they do reprint some of these books or some of these editions. I love the fact that I can get something that's more affordable as opposed to something uh, limited like those slip cases that I showed earlier, the Incal and Meta Barons too. So I think it's a very unique thing for a publishing company to offer their readers, right? It would be like Marvel releasing the same day uh, uh, omnibus edition and a trade paperback and a standard size hardcover and then a limited edition slip case. Some of them, whether they're huge books like this or limited editions or the smaller books come with these wonderful ribbons as bookmarks and you all know how much i love those now if you want to try any of these out this is where my journey began this is the incal and it's i think it's this one's still in print if i'm mistaken this one has a intro by brian michael bendis and like i said there are different editions this is the all-in-one classic collection it's the cheapest version to get because the other editions are the big books that were released. I think there's four of them that make up this one book. But this is gorgeous artwork by Mobius. There's also the now out of print slipcase that I showed off last year because it was a limited edition of that. But if you want to get into this universe, this is one that I would suggest. There's others too, um, like Bouncer if you're a fan of Westerns. There's War Comics too. I, don't, I didn't pull all these out. Uh, if you're a fan of fantasy, definitely the Legend of the Scarlet Blades, but sci-fi for sure, Meta Barons or Incal. I think this is a good segue to get people to check out Humanoids. They publish wonderful books. Now, you can find some of these books at cheapgraphicnovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers.
Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for suggesting this episode. I do love shifting the focus from time to time to other publishers, so this was a really good spotlight. I may do the same for another company, but this is one of my favorite companies that have been translating comics since 2004 into the English language. So uh, they are very near and dear to my heart. I'm a big fan of the books that they have published. Please don't forget to check out our other videos. Don't forget to come back tonight when I go over the Marvel Advanced Catalog for the month of May of 2020. There's going to be a surprise omnibus reprint in there that I didn't even announce. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget about our contest that ends tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we're giving away some Marvel Omnis, Epic Collections, Oversized Hardcovers, Trade Paperbacks, and Variant Covers. This is the Uncanny Omar. Thank you again for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.